Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd. Welcome in. It is Thursday, and um, this is not a joke. Actually, one of my community members wanted me to do a reaction to Evanescence's Bring Me to Life. What they didn't realize was back in 2002 and 2003 when this song dominated the world, I wasn't watching MTV and I wasn't into rock music. So I've never seen the actual video of this song in its entirety ever. Well, then the joke comes back on me because, well, apparently the fans of Evanescence are amazing and they're a force of galactic power because 20 years after this song on the anniversary, all the amazing fans of Evanescence said, you know what, we're gonna like this song, share this song, download this song from 2002 so much that it's number one on iTunes. So much so that magazines like Loudwire and other metal publications are trying to figure out why a song from 20 years ago is number one on iTunes. Well, it's because the committedness of the, the Evanescence fans. Now, Evanescence fans, when you watch this video, please realize that I, I'm, I don't hate this band, uh, but the video is from 2002, so I am gonna make fun of its early 2000-ish a little bit, and some of the things that uh, are kind of poignant about it. Please watch to the end of the video before you judge me too much because you're going to realize at that point I do try to tell you how I feel about Amy Lee and the band Evanescence, but I have to have fun with it because, well, this song has been played almost as much as Kryptonite from Three Doors Down, and that one is hard to listen to too because we've just heard it too many times. So without further ado, I say congratulations to Evanescence on 20 years and to the Evanescence fans for making this number one on iTunes. And here's my reaction. I'm gonna step out of the way. So. All right, doing a live reaction on, on Twitch. In three, two, one. This is for you, Rob. Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd. And the, and the Bjork um, cosplayer here is actually Amy Lee from 2002. And, and the stalker that's in the in the the reflection in the mirror it's a guy named paul who technically according to a lot of people that i've talked to it's not even supposed to be there all right so i got a problem my name is old school nerd and i do reactions to metal music and music videos but I also have friends that I've made making reactions to music and music videos. One of those friends has become very close to me. He's been a fan of the channel since pretty much, I think, not day one, maybe day like, maybe day 13, which is his lucky number. His name is Rob. And I'm calling him out by name because Rob's a And Rob said, you know what you're gonna do this month? And I was like, what? What, what, what am I what am I doing? What am I doing? He goes, you're gonna do Evanescence, bring me to life. And I was like, which one? And he's like, dude, there's only one. I'm like, what are you talking about? Here's the thing. If I've seen this video ever, I think I saw eight seconds of it when it was nominated for like the Kids' Choice Awards 2003 and i'm not joking okay back in 2002 i was actually overseas a lot uh, i think at some point in 2000 and 2003 i i might have that was when i was in perth australia and offlands austria and i think burham belgium maybe dallas too Turn of the millennium, I was doing satellite engineering work, so I was moving around a lot. It was before my kids were older, before I settled down and became the fat, bearded man you know before you. And I remember the song, and everyone loving Evanescence. At the time, I actually kind of dug 12 Stones, actually. I, it was one of the bands I was listening to. And I remember seeing the excerpt of this video because it was up for a Teen Choice Award or something. But I didn't have MTV and I didn't watch a lot of TV back then because I was moving so much. So 
I don't think I've seen the video. Now, odds are, if you're lucky, this shit is going to get blocked on YouTube. Nobody's going to see it if y'all are lucky. But because this isn't, you know, Lincoln Park or System of a Down or Corn Woodstock 99, you know, shit you'd want to see, this won't get blocked and you get to suffer with me. Now, here's the thing. It's Amy Lee, okay? And she's with, this is when Evanescence first came out. And she is doing her best Bjorn, Bjork impression from Iceland. It's actually really her. This is just, I stopped the, I was going through the little thumbnails here, trying to find a spot that would look good to start the video on. And then I, I stopped here and thought, well, this is perfect. Now, here's the thing. Um, I do know the story behind this because I did, I did see an Evanescence, um, there was, no, it wasn't Evanescence. It was an Amy Lee documentary where she was sitting down in a studio and she was just chillaxing and stuff. And she was talking about her solo stuff. And I really enjoyed it because she told the story about this song and how Paul's not supposed to be there. Paul's, Paul's not even credited in the song. Paul and 12 Stones are their own band. And they're actually, they had a couple really good albums. I have them both. I, I like their stuff. They're from New Orleans. It's all good, right? But Paul got drugged into this. I don't even know if he even knew it was going to be a problem. I don't even think they told Paul that Amy Lee and them were going to be pissed. I don't even think Paul knew about it until after. The story is convoluted and I don't even think it, care. it matters. But because one of my amazing community members said, old school, you got to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to watch this and I'm probably going to shit all over it. Why? Well, because it was made in 2003. And you guys probably won't see it anyway. And it's four minutes that I'm never going to get back. And I'm kidding. By the way, Amy Lee's an amazing vocalist. She's probably the closest we had in the United States to a Flory Anson in the early 2000s. I mean, shit, Europe had like five or six women singing like, you had Simone Simmons, you had Annette, you had Flory Anson. You had so many people in Europe singing like, like this. We had one. One. And it was Amy Lee. So I'm filming this live on Twitch right now. Rob's laughing his ass off in the chat. And I'm not joking. He's laughing at me. And his wife is going, you want me to throw something at him? Yes. Mrs. Rob, throw shit at him, please. Make it heavy, blunt, maybe with some edges. Little pointy shit. Fucker, dude. All right, here we go. Now. For all those who love Evanescence, understand that I appreciate your dedication to this band. Uh, just like Mushroom Head, Evanescence fans, they earn everything they get. Because to stick with your band through all the ups and downs takes commitment. And a lot of other bands' fans can't say they stuck through their bands through thick and thin like Evanescence and Mushroom Head fans. And the, the fans of Mushroom Head know exactly know what I'm talking about. And the fans of Evanescence, they know what I'm talking about. And come to find out, I happen to know that most Evanescence fans don't like this video either. So you can hate it with me. By the way, I, again, this, this is right up there. I'm doing, I'm doing this so that Rob doesn't like ask for like, oh, I don't know, Nickelback next month. I'm doing a, I'm doing a solid, okay? I'm, do, I'm doing one for the team. And no, I've never seen this video before. I know you don't believe me, but none of y'all believe me. I do all this shit live. Nobody believes me. Oh, you had to have seen it before. How'd you know all that stuff? Because I'm smart, damn it. Not smart enough to pick better friends. Rob. Now, I know the song. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, that. I know the song. So now, the last 
She had the obligatory two, early 2000s eyebrow piercing. Did you notice that? Okay, so they put Paul playing, they put Paul in the video playing with the guys from the band of Evanescence. Well, that's weird. And I do want to say something else. Yeah, I'm going to stop this shit a lot. I'm, I'm going to beat this damn algorithm right in the head, man. I'm telling you. No, I, there's a guy named Fred. And unlike Rob, he cares about whether or not I go into an insane asylum in the next three years from requests. But one thing that Rob, one thing that Fred says is, you know, it's not just, it's not that it's a bad song. It's just literally like, think of every song. Okay. Every song from every band that ever became commercially huge, whatever their biggest first hit was, no matter who they are, beloved or not, has been played at nauseum to the point that if anyone doesn't rebuke it, they need to get checked. And that's all it is. Like, Evanescence's new stuff, I can listen to that at least 100, 200 times. Be fine. But collectively, as a universe, this damn video even before YouTube existed, I mean, like I'm talking about billion view club, or at least billion listen club, like eight times over. It's just played at nauseum. You know? Enter Sandman. Thank you, Fred. Um, um, uh, there's a bunch of songs. Uh, any number of... All-Star, right? From Smash Mouth. Um... A photograph from Nickelback. Oh my, oh, Kryptonite. Kryptonite from Three Doors Down. Oh my God. Down, 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 down. Look, and when I hear that, I go direct. I Look, if I'm on serious radio and Kryptonite, I see it come up before it even gets through the first roll through of that little twangy guitar. I'm, I'm pounding buttons and I'm hoping Evanescence comes up. That's how much I do not want to hear Kryptonite one more damn time. See, it has nothing to do with Evanescence. Rob picked this because he knew it had been played at ad, ad nauseum and it wouldn't matter any band's first song. If it's played at nauseum, he's going to right in front of me and go react to it and I'll be like, damn it. This is why he gets one a month. Because if he got more than one a month, I would find out where he lives and bad things would happen. And his wife would help me hide the body. It's kind of freaking me out. Y'all saw that shot? It's Rob and his wife. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I haven't watched this song in so long. I have not heard this song in so long that if I listen, to, if I, I'm actually trying to, when I do reactions, I listen to the music. The music's pretty good. The song is well done. I do like the hooks. The song is well done. And it's kind of good, especially for that time. I, again, it's just, it's just been played too much. Oh, also props to Paul from 12 stones for wearing the obligatory, um, two aught gauge, um, uh, the, the beaded choker. Yeah. That's a look for 2003.
Oh, look! It's where Slipknot got started. This is how Slipknot got started. Did you know that? All the myths about this video, I'm going to tell you one you didn't know. Want to know why? I'm making this shit up on the fly. This, in, in, in 2003, this is where Slipknot really just went dark. Everything was fine. And then, and then this is where it went ugly. All of these wonderfully purposeful clowns, after this became ad nauseum, they all went to the dark side and, and went and became the insane. In half of them became insane, insane clown posse, and the other half became like the groupies for the clown in Slipknot. Bet you didn't know that. You want to know how I knew? You, and you know how you, you want to know how I knew you didn't know that? Because I made that shit up right there. Sad clown. Two thousand and three, tight black T-shirts and baggy slacks everywhere. Why? Because fifteen years later, all these fuckers be wearing skinny jeans. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not wrong, am I? No, I'm not. Okay, honestly, this nightgown did nothing for her. Also, Paul's vocal did nothing for this song. Oh! You know, because I, I refuse to listen to this song like ever for so many years, I go back and I listen to it and it's actually pretty good. I mean, you just have to get past the fact you've listened to it ad nauseum. Now, here's the thing, and I want to say this. I know a lot of you are blaming Rob and, and you should, and you should. And in fact, his wife just said in chat, skinny jeans on guys, ick. I could not agree more. In fact, I do not own one pair of skinny jeans at all. I can't wear skinny jeans. A lot of you want to know why. Mrs. Rob knows why. You know why I can't wear skinny jeans. Because, yeah. yeah. And Rob, you can get pissed at that all you want. You're the one who made me listen to this shit. So, anyway, I can, I can crack at least one joke on you. Okay, now. For what it was, it changed music in the U.S., because it introduced um, a classically trained power vocalist female to just bust out in the US. Now, unfortunately, Amy Lee was hindered a lot in her creativity because she was in the US music scene, and even to this day, it's problematic. 
And of course, all the Europeans across the pond were like, yeah, we got like eight of her and ours can do whatever they want. It's true. But for what it was, it was really good. <clears throat> and the music, now that I've been forced to sit through the whole thing, I realized that um, it's, it's got a good hook. It's got a funky beat and I can bug out to it. But unfortunately, it was played at nauseum. So, bah. oh, and for all the people that are going to go into the comment section, if this song gets to YouTube, probably not. But if it does get to YouTube and all the Evanescence fans want to throw all the hate in the comment section, I'm going to let you do it. You want to know why? Because this is why. Guy from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The double champ does what the f he wants. That's right, baby. That's right. And I'm sorry. <laughs>